Hello and welcome to this summer workshop. My name is Dave Fair and I'm a project specialist here at Freezing Your Books. In this session, in particular within InDesign, we're going to go over how to work with colors and fonts. Before I go into the actual InDesign program, I want to cover a few things about colors that we want to be, uh, be aware of before we start using them in InDesign. So whenever you're using colors in any sort of program, you want to make sure that you're using the correct color and correct shade for what you're looking for. Now, anytime you place any kind of color on a monitor, you're going to notice that the color may look different than when it is actually printed. And so the reason for that is many different things. One of them is that your computer is a monitor is backlit or you have different lighting in the room. The monitor may not be color calibrated, things like that. And so we want to make sure we're using the right color for the right purpose. So one thing we can do is if you have an ability to get a hardware software uh, purchase that will allow you to calibrate your monitors to be able to get you the best color possible, that is one option to do. The other option is using a color guide. And so for reasons, we have a process color guide here. This process color guide has a number of different color swatches in it that shows you all the different colors and the color values below each swatch and so if you're looking for something particular the certain shade or certain type of color you're looking for you can use that color guide and i'm going to reference that color guide in this uh, tutorial as well uh, i can use those colors because this book is press printed so it'll show you the accurate color for what you're looking for and so that's one thing to do with colors the other thing is with fonts now when working with fonts you want to make sure you're using fonts that are um, usable that you have permissions to use and so when you do uh, install adobe software you will have a library of fonts available to you if you choose to use a font outside that library there are a few things you need to find out just make sure that the font is not a demo only font or a font that is good on your printer or on your computer screen but not necessarily for PDF creation and so we're gonna go over a touch on that too during the session so how about we just get ready so here we are in our InDesign, and if you wanted to check out a previous video I did, there is one for how to create up a brand new spread with a two pages with all the guides in place and explaining what they do. So feel free to check out that video to get a, a brand new spread going. So in the beginning, I referenced the color guide and using colors in InDesign. What we're going to do now is we're going to use a specific tool in InDesign to create colors, and it's one of the tools I would recommend, probably the only tool I'd recommend to create colors in InDesign, and that's called the swatches panel. And so on the right-hand side, you can see I have the swatches panel showing up here. Now, if you don't see this on the right-hand side, uh, you can go to the window menu, go under color, and you'll see swatches there. And so if there's no check marks there and you click on it, it'll highlight that panel and that panel will come forward on the side here and you'll be able to see it. So uh, make sure you're using this watches panel because this is going to be the best way to create and manage your colors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this panel. I'm just going to pull it out here. And then I'm going to look at the different colors I have here. Now, InDesign does have a variety of default color swatches that are installed once you uh, open up or install the program on your computers. So those are the ones that are available there. You'll notice that they're all using CMYK color. And that's one thing we want to touch on. So I'm going to just double click on this to show an example. And so we have a uh, just a typical uh, blue color swatch or cyan color swatch. And you notice that the colors are using cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. And so whenever we're printing on any press, those are the four colors that we'll use here. We want to make sure we're always using uh, CMYK to create colors in your book. Now there is the RGB option here. Now RGB uses red, green, blues. These are not the colors that we print with uh, in our presses and also they are colors in the red, green, blue and color gamut that are outside of what we can print, uh, replicate on those presses. So you wanna make sure we always use the CMYK colors that are in this menu here. So to get started, we're gonna go over the creating a brand new swatch option here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just create a frame box on my page just so I can start working with that. What we're going to do is going to go into the little flat menu in the top right corner. And so all these different menus you see on the panels I see on the side will have these flat menus and you can use those to see extra options. So in this case, I'm going to go into this flat menu and select new color swatch. So you can see here, we should have showed you earlier was the CMYK values. We have an option on top to choose to color or name the color, whatever you want, uh, just by describing it. Or you can actually choose the checkbox to just show the CMYK values, depending on what you're comfortable with. The color type should always be process. Um, process color is what every book is be printed in uh, at this point. So then you want to make sure you choose process for your color. And your color mode is CMYK. And so we went over that just a, a few seconds ago about CMYK, making sure we're using CMYK for all your color values. So we're going to pick a color out of the color guidebook that I showed earlier. And so this color has a kind of a greenish color. So I'm going to go into my values and look at what I have here. So my sign will be 100. My magenta will be zero. My yellow will be 47 and my black will be 60. You can see it's a very dark green color. And once I have this color value set, I can go into the add button 
and now it adds that color. And if I go to my swatches panel, you can see that the color is now added into the bottom. So you can go into that color at any point and you can modify it and change it however you'd like. If you want to create another color, you simply just keep on changing your color values, hit add again, and the colors will continue to add into your swatches panel. So I'll click on done on there. So now I have my green color, I have my color in my color swatch. But now if I were to want to modify this color, all you have to do is double click. And now you can select those color values and you can start changing the color values to whatever you choose, depending on the swatches you're looking at. So let's say I change my color, hit the preview button. You can see that now it changes the colors in the page that have used that specific swatch. And so this is a really good part of the swatches panel is if you do create a color and use it on your page, you decide that this color is not going to work for you. You want to modify it. All you do is modify the swatch and then all the colors on the page that are used that swatch will now get changed over to that new color. So we hit OK to that. The next color or next color option we're going to go through is how to create a gradient swatch. And so I'm going to just click on page here to deselect that particular box. And go into the flat menu and choose new gradient swatch. Now here in the new gradient swatch you can see here it types there's an option to choose whether you want linear or radial so you want uh, a straight line or do you want it uh, roundish in shape and here it's going to be linear. What we want to do is we want to choose which color we want first and so to do that we're going to go into the gradient ramp here in the bottom and we're going to click on that first color. You can see now here is just a plain white. So I'm going to go into here and I can adjust those colors how I want. If I want to start with that color, you can see that the gradient ramp now changes color there too. You can also go into the swatches option and it'll show you all the colors that you created in your swatch panel already and choose the one you want. Second thing we want to do is we want to choose the secondary color, the one that it transitions to. I'm going to click on that color option on that right hand side. And we're going to choose another color here. So now you can see your gradient ramp going from that kind of greenish color to that kind of purple pinkish color there. And so now you can see we have a gradient started here. On the top of that gradient, we also have an option to change where you want the color transition to happen. So if you want it to happen right in the beginning, right in the middle, or right near the end. So you can modify your color or gradient uh, wherever you want that transition to be. Another thing we can do is we can add multiple colors. So if you want to add multiple colors, we just click anywhere below the gradient ramp and it creates another color swatch. We can go in and choose either CMYK values or we choose our swatches option. You can see now as we create more colors, more colors appear in that gradient ramp. And once we have everything we need, we can label the gradient however you want to label it and hit add. And as soon as we hit add, we'll click on done. You notice that in the swatches panel, we see we have a new gradient swatch. And so then we would just click on to the frame or the box or the item that you want to color and click on the gradient swatch and now it creates that gradient swatch. And you can also do a double click on that gradient and you can modify it at any point and it will affect every single object that is, has that gradient applied to it. Now that we have our colors and gradients set, we want to go over how to apply them to different objects and, and different text and things like that that you have on your book. So I'm going to start again with another frame tool. So I'm just going to click on another frame here, click one on the bottom below there. And now you see that it starts off with no fill and no stroke. And so this little icon on the ball on the side here showing that the top one here has the full box. That is the fill. That is the, the center portion of the object. And then you have the one behind it that is the stroke, which is the line around it. And so if you click on to the stroke option, you can see that it brings it to the front. That means that is the active color that you're working with right now. In this case, it's none. And so I'm going to click on to one of my colors here to apply it. Now you won't necessarily see it on the box itself because the line is very, very small and so you're not going to be able to see it. So I'm going to move over to my stroke panel, which is on the right hand side. And I'm going to increase my stroke here just so that you can kind of see what it looks like. Now I'm going to go back to my frame box. You can see that that green is on that stroke of that box. One thing we can do is we can click on to those double arrows that are right beside and we can flop the color so that it goes from the stroke to the fill. The other option we can do is click onto the fill box and it brings it to the front. That means it's the active color and then click on to the color swatch to create that color there. And so those are different ways to activate and to also apply those colors. If you look on the tool panel as well on the left hand side, you'll see that those colors also appear there as well. And so those are the ways you can apply that. Now it also works with text as well. So I'm just going to just remove these boxes here. And we're going to create a text box. 
I'm going to highlight that text. I'm going to create a larger version of it so we can see it. And this could be a headline or anything else on your page that you want to stand out. So here I have the text highlighted. I'm going to make sure I have all, all my characters selected. And you can see on the top left of the swatches panel that there is a fill and a stroke for the text as well. And so here's the fill. I can change the fill of that text to any color I want. You can see it changes the color of the text. Or you can go back to the stroke and you can add a stroke to that text as well. And so if I were to click on that and you can deselect the text, it's really a little hard to see with that thin stroke. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight that text and increase that stroke. So you can see that I can change the stroke of the text. I can also change the color inside the text. So those are two are independent that you can change back and forth. Another option with your swatches panel is to changing the tint of a color as well. So I'm going to change this text back to just a regular black color. And I'm going to change the tint. So this basically makes it more transparent. It tones it down to create a lighter text. And so here I went down to 49%. You can see now my text is now turned gray because I'm now using 49% of that black color. And that can be done with any color you have in your color swatches here listed. You can also do is if you want to create a specific tint color, you can go into the side menu and choose new tint swatch. And so when you go into here, you'll be able to choose whatever color range you want. You can see that there is a 49% already. So it's choosing the black by default because I have that selected. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into uh, my green color that I have here, then go into the new tint swatch. And now it shows us that green color is my default and I can change the tint to whatever I want and add that to my swatches panel. I'm going to click on done. You can see that there is now a tint swatch here that is 77%. You can see that little number there. It shows that exactly what the tint of that swatch is going to be. The last thing I want to touch with the colors is um, the colors that are default in InDesign. You can see now we have our none, we have registration, we have paper, and we have black. And so you don't want to mess with those colors. Uh, the one color you don't want to use is the registration color. And so here we have a registration color and a black color. They look very similar, but they are very different. You can see when I hover over top of the black, it has zero for all three colors, and then black A is 100. Now, if I go to the registration, this will actually print 100% of all the colors on every single uh, option. So it's going to be 100% cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. And so this isn't meant for um, designing purposes. This is actually meant for our, actually our production purposes when we do print and we have different marks on our printing sheets to line up colors and things like that. That's what the registration color is for. So you don't want to use that color for anything in your book because it's not meant for actual printing. And it's going to become a bit of a mess because we're printing 100% of all four colors for that. Um, it can become difficult and cause printing issues when we use that color. So you want to avoid using that registration color and just use your regular black. So that's it for the colors at this point. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this back to my regular 100% black and move my swatches panel back into the side here. You can see as you grab and move around those panels, they can snap into those different areas to create a different workspace. So now I have my text here. I'm going to go over a little bit about fonts. And so when it comes to fonts, uh, like I said before, there's lots of fonts in the Adobe library that you have access to. And so when you go to and highlight text and you go through your library, you're going to see a lot of different fonts here that are actually used for uh, InDesign or that have been created by InDesign. Uh, we do have some Friesen fonts that are available too if you want to use some of them. So if we want to uh, use those, if you go into the Connect Me site under the download screen, you'll see there's a number of different fonts that are used for our online design program and you can download and use for InDesign as well. And so feel free to check those out to see what kind of font options you have there. Three things we want to go over as far as text goes, we want to go over just applying text. So it's pretty straightforward. There's a our text tool option here. You click and drag and you create your text box. And as soon as you do that, your cursor will start to flash on the left hand side, indicating that you're ready to start typing. Now, if you go into the very top on the control bar, you'll see that you'll have your font options. You'll have the type of font, whether you want bold, italic, underline, whatever font option is available is going to be in there. You'll have your size and you'll have your letting. Uh, letting is basically the space from one line to the next. And you have a variety of other tools as far as underline, stroke through, um, sizing, all the different options are available here along this toolbar. What you also have is if you click on to this paragraph button here, you'll have your justifications, you'll have your indents, you'll have um, all the different things you can do. There's also drop caps and things like that. All along here, there's all those options to change and modify as you need to. So uh, feel free to check those out when you're typing in all your text. 
Another thing we want to do with fonts, we want to make sure we have a font. If we're using one that maybe was downloaded or was, um, wasn't was in the Adobe package, we want to make sure that it's going to work. And so we're going to go to the Type menu. And we're going to go to the Find Replaced Font. And so in this Find Replaced, or find replaced Font menu, we're going to see that all the fonts that have been used in this layout listed here. And so you can see these are the two fonts that I used before. This one here is probably just a space that I had in that text box, which is why it's showing up in my list. And here I'm going to choose my Arial Black. And so on the bottom here, if you have the more info button clicked on, you can see that it will add more info to this font. You can be able to see uh, different parts of this font and the different details. One thing you want to check is we're under restrictions. You want this to say normal. If you have any sort of font that says cannot embed into PDF EPS or anything else, or it says demo or anything other than normal, then that font may not be used for uh, PDF creation. And so when you're trying to submit your files to Freedens, that font will get replaced with something else when you create your PDFs. And you're not going to notice it unless you check those files after the fact. So you want to make sure that that does say normal. And so that way you can use those fonts in your layout. I hope that information was helpful in regards to colors and fonts. Feel free to check out another video I'll be doing on paragraph styles and character styles to be able to best utilize those fonts and have styles to be able to use them to the best of your ability. So I hope that was helpful and we'll see you in the next session.